Look at these examples of palindromic numbers. Every four-digit palindrome is divisible by 11. Is this always, sometimes, or never true? What about five digits or six digits? Can you generalize for palindromes of any length? Okay, so it's very tempting with this task to jump straight towards an algebraic proof, but I think in doing so, you miss out an opportunity to talk about place value a little bit. So in the classroom, I'll get the students to try a few four digit palindromes and check that they all seem to be divisible by 11. So nudging towards this always being true, but then we have an opportunity to work systematically. So I'll say, what is the smallest four digit palindrome? And hopefully they'll come back at me saying it's 1001. And when we divide that by 11, we get 91. And then I say, okay, what's the next smallest palindrome? And what do you physically have to do to this, to this number? Well, the thousands and the units stays the same. And the tens and the hundreds increase by one. That's what happens as you go from the smallest palindrome to the next smallest. Now, how do I know without calculating that this is still going to be divisible by 11? Well, it's the tens and the hundreds which have both increased by one. We've increased it by 110. And 110 is divisible by 11. It's 10 lots of 11. So without calculating, I know that this answer, when I divide it by 11, would be 101. An extra 10 11s. And this rule, uh, this rule is going to hold for the next one as well. You can see it's just these middle two digits, the, the tens and the hundreds, which are increasing by one each time. So we're just adding 110 each time. So that one would be 111. Now, that would be nice if it worked all the way, but it doesn't because it, it falls down when we get to 1991 because the, the next palindrome after that, um, well, we obviously can't just add one to these anymore. It's the thousands and the units that change. The next one after this is 2002. But we don't need to panic here as well, because all we need to do is check the difference between these two numbers. And it's quicker to just do this in your head. You can see we've just added on 11 there. But if you really want to stick with this idea of investigating place value, you can say, OK, what's physically changed with this number compared to this number? Well, the thousands and the units have increased by one. So we've added on a thousand. And we've added on a one. And then what's happened to the hundreds and the tens? Well, we've subtracted 900 and we've subtracted um, a 90. And when you work out the result of all that calculation, you just get plus 11. So as we bridge these 1000s, we're only adding on 11, so it's still going to be divisible by 11. And this rule now will hold all the way up until I get to the largest four-digit palindrome, which is 9,999. So now we've done all that work on place value, we're in a position to make more sense of the algebraic proof. So what I like to do is write down four letters on the board, A, B, C, D, and say to pupils, OK, if this is a four digit number, is this a palindrome? And quite quickly, students will say things like it's only a palindrome if B is equal to C and A is equal to D. So I say, OK, let's rub those out and make that happen. So now we've got A, B, B, A or ABBA. And is this a palindrome? And pupils will hope to say, yes, it is. And now I like to say, how many A's and how many B's can you see there? And their instinctive response is going to be, oh, I can see two A's and two B's. But here's the opportunity to link it with what we've just done with the place value stuff and actually write in the, the place value heading. So we've got our units, tens, hundreds and thousands. And actually, how many A's and actually how many B's are there? Well, there are 1,001 A's. And how many B's are there? There's 100 and 110. There's 110 B's in total. And what do we know about these two numbers from the previous work? Well, we know 1001 is 99, uh, is 99 divided by 11 is 99, sorry. And 110 is 10 lots of 11. So we're just one step away from the formal algebraic proof here where we factorize, we take our factor of 11 out and we know that's going to be 91A plus 10B. So we've arrived at the formal algebraic proof to why any four-digit palindrome is always divisible by 11. 
Okay, so hopefully you like that nice link between the place value work and the formal algebraic proof. And one thing we've not looked at yet is different length palindromes. So I'll leave that for you to have a go at. What about five digit or six digit palindromes? Are you gonna jump back and test three digit and two digit palindromes first to try and get um, try and specialize with smaller numbers? Have a play with the task and let me know your thoughts.